coral reefs are distributed around the tropical belt of the ocean. They are hotspots of biodiversity and home to many creatures. Today, there are fewer and fewer healthy reefs that are bursting with life. It's getting harder for corals to grow and reproduce on their own. And the tiny coral babies have a hard time surviving. In fact, our world is changing rapidly. Corals are dying and reefs are declining worldwide. How can we address this magnitude of loss? This now adult coral was outplanted into the wild a few years ago. Most corals get in the mood for love during one special event per year. Under the cover of night, corals of each species synchronize their spawning at a secretly appointed time. The coral's own reproductive potential could allow work on larger restoration scales. One may be able to grow millions of coral babies, each genetically unique, from one spawning event. Genetic diversity is the key to giving corals the best chance to adapt to a changing world and to survive. Vast quantities of the coral's spawn, the coral's eggs and sperm cells, may fill the ocean with a spawning snowstorm. Some of that spawn can be collected with special nets and used to grow new coral babies to support natural propagation. After the coral spawn is fertilized in the lab, the little embryos start to grow into coral larvae. A few days later, these swimming coral larvae attach to the bottom and change into baby coral polyps. For a coral larva, a suitable place to settle can be a special surface like a tile that can be handled easily. Then the coral babies need a safe kindergarten where they can be raised in huge numbers. The last step is to bring the coral babies into the wild. Special tiles settled on by tiny corals are able to be directly seeded onto the reef. Now the young corals have to grow.
day, if all goes well, they will eventually grow into adult coral colonies and spawn again. Mm -hmm.